I'm Brent Russell, owner of Tarrant County Pest Control, and welcome to uh, part three. Um, this is actually C2 of pesticide labels and label comprehension. So um, what this is, is the Texas Department of Agriculture requires you to have 20 general classroom hours of training when you're an apprentice in order uh, to prepare you to take your technician license. Uh, once you've completed the 20 classroom hours um, and eight hours in each category, then you can go ahead and take your technician license. And so this course is designed to fulfill that requirement. And we have done the first two hours and we have now started uh, on the third hour, which is pesticide labels and label comprehension. And this is the second part of that and we're about to talk about signal words and symbols words like danger warning caution we're gonna break this down we're gonna take a look at each one of these words and have a make sure that we have a really good understanding of looking at these words one reason that these words are so important is that if you get a uh, buy some pesticide and you have a container and you look at that at that container um, like for instance here I've got some Talstar that's a, an aerosol and on that you can see the caution. So we're going to talk about what's the difference between if you see the word caution, warning, or danger. Those are the three words that are called signal words and they are designed so that you just with one simple word you're able to look at it and decide what category that these chemicals are in or this pesticide uh, it may even be an herbicide and then you can make a decision on whether or not uh, that you want to use that pesticide real quickly now of course you may need to look further into the label and, and the understanding of it but generally um, by looking at a pesticide if I see caution on it then I know that this is a, a, a going to be a good uh, pesticide to use around say houses um, and schools and, and nursing homes and hospitals um, even my say my own home but one of the uh, best benefits of being able to understand the levels or the danger of these pesticides is for yourself in working around them and especially if you're going to be doing this as a living and you're working with pesticides almost every day um, it's good to know that some of these pesticides, uh, that, that when, when you read the label on them, you can look real quickly and tell in this case that it says caution, that that is not a real bad, um, highly toxic um, uh, type of pesticide that you would have to worry about, as opposed to if I had a pesticide that said danger on it, right away that's going to jump out at me and tell me, whoa, I need to step back, I need to read this label, i got to be careful, I need to make sure I have the proper protective equipment to wear to apply that. Um, on my truck, I don't carry any pesticides with a, labor, uh, with a label of warning or danger. All of my pesticides contain a caution warning. Now, that doesn't mean that I don't use some of those pesticides sometimes or that I might have to use them in the future, but on my truck I don't carry those kind of chemicals if I was going to use it I would buy that I would use it up or I would store it in a safe place um, and then so when I go out to buy a new chemical especially I'm able to look quickly and and decide just how bad that chemical is so let's um, take a look now at these specific words danger warning and caution every label has a signal word required by the EPA. Danger, warning, and caution. These words give you a signal of how dangerous the product is to humans. This knowledge helps you choose proper precautions for yourself, your workers, and other people and animals who may be exposed. The signal word does not tell the risk of delayed effects or allergic effects. 
The signal word appears in large letters on the front of every label, usually next to the statement, Keep out of reach of children, which is required on every product. Also, the signal word will precede the precautionary statement. Okay, so the first signal word that we're going to take a look at is the word danger. This word signals you that the pesticide is highly toxic, or it could cause severe eye or skin burning. Highly toxic pesticides also carry the skull and crossbones symbol and the word poison printed in red. Very small amounts, even just a drop, could kill an average size adult. Exposure through skin contact, breathing, or swallowing could cause acute illness. Because pesticides in small quantities can affect adults, caution should be exercised when using all products around children and small pets. A product in a toxicity category 4 is to an adult as one in toxicity category 3 is to a child. The signal word warning. Warning is also pretty bad. Any product that is moderately toxic or causes moderate eye and skin irritation is labeled warning. Don't let that fool you. Just a teaspoonful to a tablespoonful taken by mouth could kill an average size adult. Now let's take a look at the signal word caution. Caution is pretty much everything that I use has the signal word caution. Now some things can be a little more dangerous than others so you have to pay attention to the toxicity levels on these products. Any product that is slightly toxic or causes slight eye and skin irritation is labeled caution. It would take an ounce to more than a pint taken by mouth to kill an average size adult. All pesticide labels contain additional statements to help you take proper precautions to protect yourself and other people, animals, and the environment. It's very important when you get a pesticide that you read these labels and have a thorough understanding. Just because it says caution, don't let that give you a false sense of security into thinking that it's safe. Remember, these are all pesticides. Pesticides are dangerous and they should all be handled with caution and according to the label. Okay, let's talk about the route of entry. The route of entry can be uh, found on the label under what's commonly known as the precautionary statement. The notice follows the signal word and it tells which route of entry, like the mouth or your skin or your eyes or your lungs, needs special protection. Many pesticides are hazardous in more than one way. So, study these statements carefully. Danger, followed by may be fatal if swallowed or inhaled, is a lot different than danger, followed by the words corrosive or causes eye damage. So make sure you read these statements you understand them. If you don't, ask questions because uh, the word danger could be dangerous in one way of breathing it with one pesticide, but yet it might be dangerous in another way of if you get it on you. So this tells you what kind of proper uh, protective equipment that you need to be wearing. 
protective clothing and equipment. In the state of Texas, this is commonly referred to as personal protective equipment, PPE. Some labels fully describe the protective equipment that you need, including the kind of respirator to wear. Other labels require the use of a respirator, but do not specify the type or the model. Many labels carry no statement at all. You should follow all label instructions on protective clothing or equipment. However, a lack of instructions does not mean that you don't need to wear any protection. Likewise, the mention of only one piece of equipment does not rule out the need for additional protection. Sensible selection of protective equipment depends on a thorough understanding of the pesticide, the job, the weather, the applicator, and how these factors interact. For example, a warning label might state, causes skin and eye irritation. Do not get in eyes, on skin, or on clothing. Always wear goggles while handling pesticides, even though the label does not say so. Considering wearing coveralls, over-the-work, your uh, regular work clothes, and chemical-resistant gloves and footwear for added protection. Wear a chemical-resistant suit and hat for prolonged contact and for overhead spray applications. Safe pesticide use depends on risk awareness, proper protective equipment, skill in handling equipment, and pesticides, plus personal hygiene and professional image are very important. Okay, now let's take a look at the Telstar label and see what it says about uh, personal protective equipment. Okay, so this is the Talstar uh, P, which stands for professional, and this is a product that I use quite a bit. Um, <clears throat> we use it for general pest treatments. We also use it um, sometimes for yard sprays and, and different things like that. So, if we take a look at this pesticide label, this is the front page of the label and on this page there's a lot of information that we've been talking about but right now what we want to do is we want to look down here over to the right and <clears throat> down here in this precautionary statement let's zoom in on this okay now under this precautionary statement it talks about first of all you remember we were talking about um, the uh, entry points and so what we have here is it's saying that it's harmful if it's swallowed, inhaled, or absorbed through the skin. <clears throat> so there's your entry points and so that kind of tells you right there that you know that you want to be careful not to drink it of course that's an easy one right but you want to be careful not to inhale this as well and you don't want to get it on your skin because it can be absorbed through your skin. Okay? Um, if we read on down to this next paragraph, right here, it talks about all pesticide handlers, right here, all pesticide handlers, mixers, loaders, and applicators must wear long sleeved shirt and long pants okay socks shoes and chemical resistant gloves so when we read this we can see right here that it's telling us that when we're mixing it when we're loading it in other words if you're loading it onto a truck or into a storage area or if you're applying it that you have to wear a long sleeve shirt 
long pants, socks, shoes, and chemical resistant gloves. <clears throat> Not all labels will tell you that, but this one does. It says that after the product is diluted in accordance with label directions for use and or when mixing and loading using a closed spray tank transfer system such as a U-turn or an inline injector system, shirt, pants, socks, shoes, and waterproof gloves are sufficient. Okay, so it's telling us here that when you're mixing this product that you have to wear what did it say right in here? It was shirt, pants, socks, shoes, and waterproof gloves are sufficient. All right. So it's saying that you don't have to wear a respirator. Uh, you don't have to wear a lot of extra protective equipment for this particular chemical that just simply having a, a shirt, pants, sock, shoes, waterproof gloves, that, that's okay to wear when, you, when you're mixing this. Um, and it goes, and it says then, in addition to all pesticide handlers must wear a respirator protection device. <clears throat> now you're saying, well, wait a minute. You just said that we don't have to wear a respirator. So here's a good example of where you want to read these, these labels all the way through and completely understand them. Okay? So before you freak out, let's read this all the way through. It says, in addition, all pesticide handlers must wear a respirator protection device when working <clears throat> in a non-ventilated space. Okay? So now it's talking about here that a non-ventilated space that's not inside of a house inside of a house is ventilated so it, it's talking about an area like for instance if you're doing a termite treatment or or whatever you, you may be treating for and you're underneath a house and now some houses are ventilated they have um, vents around the side of the house to allow air to blow down through there but if you're in a crawl space and there's no ventilation and you're applying this product, then you have to wear a respirator. Otherwise, you do not. Okay? So if you're mixing it, or you're just spraying it outside, or you're spraying it anywhere that's ventilated, you don't have to wear a respirator. Okay? So, now, let's, let's move back up to the top of the statement here, where it was talking about that it's harmful if it's swallowed, inhaled, or absorbed through the skin. All right, it says, avoid contact with the skin, eyes, and clothing, okay? Avoid breathing spray mist. Wash thoroughly with soap and water after handling and before eating, drinking, chewing gum, or using tobacco. Remove contaminated clothing and wash before reuse, okay? So, so this um, is basically saying that you can wear regular clothes, and if you get some the pesticide on you, that you have to wash, take that off. So, so here's what I do. I, I always carry an extra shirt in my truck. And if I'm mixing some chemical, and for whatever reason some gets on my shirt or it gets on me, I always have water and soap and a, and a clean shirt. And I can take that shirt off and I can wash myself uh, with the soap and water. And then I have a clean towel so that I can dry and clean myself and then put a clean shirt back on. So if you're out and you're running jobs and you're running a lot of jobs, uh, you just never know what's gonna happen, especially if you're using a power sprayer. A hose on that power sprayer can bust and, and you could get soaked in pesticide. Um, you could be pumping up your hand sprayer and something could happen and, and pesticide get all over you. So um, it's a good idea to be prepared and to think ahead for some of those things. So let, let's talk about though, now there's a big difference between getting mixed chemical on you and getting it right out of the, uh, right out of the, the bottle when it's concentrated. Now these chemicals, they are highly concentrated and it makes them very dangerous when they're in that state. 
So if, if you're when you're mixing it, that's why it's so important that you're wearing eye protection, gloves, um, that you have uh, uh, the clothes and, sh and pants, shirt, shoes, the, the whole thing on. Because if anything happens and that should splash out, you don't want it to get on your skin. Now, in Texas, it gets really, really hot, 107. It was 111 here the other day. It gets really hot, and so we tend to want to wear uh, short sleeve shirts a lot. But here's what I do is I have a short, my short sleeve shirt, but it comes all the way down to my elbow. And then I have long rubber gloves that come up past my elbow. So when I'm spraying or I'm mixing, my whole arm is completely covered. Um, it's just, it's real important that you take precautions, especially when you're dealing with the pesticide before it's been mixed. Let me give you an example. When you're mixing that stuff and it's in the container and it has not been mixed yet, it's very highly concentrated. After we mix it with water, typically for in this case, uh, we're looking at this, this product is Talstar. Talstar P, which is, um, uh, which stands for professional. So when you when you mix this stuff, we're mix going to mix it at around a rate of say 0.03 percent, which would be kind of high for this, or maybe even less. Well, <clears throat> what that means is that it that that your the mix after you've mixed it with water inside of your hand pump sprayer. That percent of active ingredient is 0.03%. So 97.93% is water. So you're 97.93% water and just three hundredths of 1% of it is active ingredient. Now there's a big difference if you're doing a power spray and you've been spraying, especially in, in say, the, the big tank that I'm mixing back of the truck, it's going to be mixed at a much lower rate even than that. And so if you get some of that on you, that's not nearly as dangerous as getting straight chemical right out of the jug that you spill on you. So <clears throat> if you open up the chemical and, and you're going to mix it and you pour it and you get some of that on your arm straight out of the jug, it can burn you and blister you or, or give you a rash or uh, poison you by absorbing through your skin. Now, if you've already mixed it and it's only 0.03% chemical and 97.93% water and, and you get some of that on you and you wash it off, there's a good chance that it's probably not going to do anything to you at all. It's not going to burn you. It's not going to, and there's not going to be any rash. There's not going to be no blistering of any kind because it's been diluted. So that's why it's important that, that I always have water, soap, towels, and a change of clothes in my truck whenever I'm working. So that if I have to and I'm working, especially if it's already been mixed and I get chemical all over me, I can just clean up, take those clothes off, put on clean clothes, and then make sure that I, I wash those clothes when I get home. Okay, let's take a look at something else on this label here. Look over here to the right. And right above where we were reading above this precautionary statement, right here where it says first aid. Okay, let's zoom in on that real quick. And under this first aid, remember there was three ways that you have to worry about this particular pesticide harming you. And that was if you swallow it, if you inhale it, or if it gets on your skin or in your eyes, okay? And here it tells you if you swallow it, call Poison Control Center or a doctor immediately for treatment. And right down here is the hotline number, okay? There's the number to call for poison control. That's on all the labels. Um, down here next tells you if you inhale it, it says to move the person to fresh air. If the person's not breathing, call 911. gives you some advice on what to do there. Um, next is, if it's on your skin or your clothing, take off the <clears throat> contaminated clothing. Rinse the skin immediately with plenty of water for 15 to 20 minutes. Call Poison Control Center or doctor for treatment advice. Okay, so here we're, like we talked about a little while ago, makes a big difference on 
when you get this on your skin, whether it's um, 100% or whether it's been diluted down to just 0.03%. So if you get some on your, it's been mixed and you get it on your hands, it just says here simply to rinse immediately with plenty of water. And so that's what I do, and, and I've, um, I've never had any trouble with this product after it's been mixed. Now, I've never gotten any of it on me when it's 100%, and I hope that never happens. But I always take precaution, and I wear gloves, and make sure I have eye protection and, and all those things when I'm mixing. Uh, here it says if you, it gets in your eyes, to hold the eye open and rinse slowly and gently with water for 15 minutes to 20 minutes okay so th th there's where you go so if something does happen um, the first thing you should do is turn to the label to look at the label if you can't figure out go to that hotline call the 800 number or call a, a doctor and get some advice now the next thing if we look up here in the top left hand corner whenever you get a, a pesticide we've been looking at some of these basic things that are on here for instance, this tells you uh, what it controls. Down here is, is what it is, your active ingredient, which is bifenthrin. Um, so, <clears throat> but one of the things that I always look at, first thing when I get a pesticide label, is I look to see what it will control. Here it says that Telstar is to control pest indoors and outdoors. Now, not all labels allow you to use the same pesticide indoor and outdoor, but Telstar does. Um, it says that you can use it on a residential, institutional, public, commercial, and industrial buildings. So that's good to know. Um, you know that you can use it on houses, you can use it on businesses. Uh, public buildings means you can use it in, in schools if you're using a school. Um, it also says you can use it in greenhouses. And you know, you'll have people ask you, well, what about my animals? Well, the label right here tells you animal confinement facilities, livestock premises, and even kennels. This product is labeled, and I tell my customers this a lot when they ask me about their dogs, I say, this product is actually labeled to spray dog kennels, and then you can let it dry and put the dogs in the kennel. It makes them feel much better at ease knowing that it's not going to harm um, their animals. It's also made uh, to use in food handling establishments and on lawns, in ornamentals, in parks, recreational areas, and athletic fields. Uh, that's something else that I like to tell my customers, is this is labeled, you know, especially if they ask me, what about the kids that are playing in the backyard and if we're going to do a yard spray with this? Well, it's labeled to use in parks, recreation areas, and athletic fields. So by knowing your label, knowing the places that you can use it, when customers ask you about these things, um, it makes you be able to give them a much more informed answer about it and also you can tell them that they can go and pull these um, these labels up online and uh, whenever we do a treatment we we'll always write down the name of the chemical so I'll show them what the chemical is and tell them that they can research it as well okay so this is the end of the C2 video uh, C2 is the second part of this is a pesticide labels and label comprehension. So you're required to have two hours in each category. And what I'm doing is I'm making these videos and breaking them down into 30 minute segments. So they'll be <clears throat> under pesticide labels and label comprehension. They'll be C1, C2, C3, and C4. And each video is going to be um, it's going to be 30 minutes long, so all together, that's a two hours that's required to, uh, for you to be able to take your technician license. Um, so the next one will be C3, it'll be another 30 minute video, um, and then C4, and then that will conclude um, the uh, pesticide labels and label comprehension.